Welcome to day 1,523 of What Chef To Now. Sharon Hornell from here with cows. They're not magnetic salt and pepper shakers, but they are salt and pepper shakers. They're my daughter. She loves cows. Salt and pepper. Anyway, today let's talk about kindred spirits and our spiritual well-being. We are launching into the fourth area of our annual challenge. We've done physical in January, emotional in February, mental we just finished up yesterday in March, area and aspect of our life, and this segment this month for the annual challenge, the BU 365 Day Challenge, to do one thing every day that improves us or continually improves us and moves us and makes progress toward all these areas and aspects of our life, our long-term goals, uh, we're going to be focusing on our spiritual well-being. So today, the first thing we need to do for each and every one of us, because it's a slightly different for each and every one of us, is define what is spiritual well-being to you? What does it mean to you? So that's our action item today. Define what spiritual well-being means to you. And we talked about some of the components, some of the things that might make up spiritual well-being and just gave some ideas about that. And through the course of this month, we'll really explore our own spirituality, our own experience. We use the SOAP framework to help us move toward something that we want with respect to our spiritual well-being. And then I said over the course of this year we will go through it at least 12 times the soap framework so that it is installed in our subconscious and we just automatically do it mine after 10 times of doing the 30 plus day uh get up and go challenge from in 2020 and 2021 it's already in my subconscious it's automatic for me when something comes up a change or a challenge or a, a goal or an objective or an opportunity it automatically subconsciously goes through my soap framework and if i need it to because it's something that needs more conscious consideration it'll pop up into my conscious and guess what i do i apply the soap framework again so uh today our in order to, to be more consistent and make my life easier, to be perfectly honest, I decided, I think it was probably, I don't even know if it was in January or February, I decided that I was going to make the idiom for my Super Size Your Business group correspond to the annual challenge topic so I didn't have to have my brain going in, you know, completely opposite directions some days. And it also made it easier to have an idiom that's topic and specific for a period of time. Now yesterday I looked up spiritual idioms and re that religious sometimes idioms and a lot of idioms come from the Bible or originated in the Bible the Bible is one of the main sources of idioms and expressions that we use today why the Bible's full of stories right and stories are the things that stick with us the longest I think the Bible is clear evidence of that that stories are one of the best ways to communicate anything and sell anything to people right what has been sold to more people than organized religion? Religion, the Bible, different religions, right? Not just the Bible, but any religion, the Quran, whatever is your book of faith. So, or not, maybe you're not religious. Like, I'm not religious anymore. I'm spiritual, but not religious is how I describe myself. So, we have to first define it. And for our Supersize Your Business, I decided I'm gonna do a spiritual or spiritual well-being related idiom every day for the month of April. So today was kindred spirits, or sometimes it's called kindred soul. And we talked about how is that important for your business and supersizing you run your business. And I say it's like the most important thing. If you find people that are your kindred spirits, they become your super fans and they will help promote your business even more than you do. Because why? Word of mouth is the best form of promotion for anything, right? We buy things based on other people's recommendations, even other people we don't know. Thus, the Amazon rating system and the, all the different rating systems that have come about, the you know Yelp and the different systems that rate things uh, and give us an idea of what other people's experience with something has been. Because I'd rather hear from other people what their experience has been than from the person selling me the thing, right? Because the person selling the thing has a vested interest in me buying the thing. So we talked about kindred spirit today. We talked about what, what goes into our spiritual well-being. And I, like everybody else, have really not spent a lot of time thinking about that. It's been an, a topic and a main area of the my personal goal setting for a long time, but it's never really been something that I sat down and for an entire month I thought about and broke it down into little bite-sized pieces and thought about it in the little components that make up spiritual well-being. And that's what we're going to do this month as part of the annual challenge. Because if we do a little thing every day and, and learn and understand it better, we're light years ahead of other people 
except for the people, of course, that spirituality is their thing, and that's what they're studying and doing, and, and that's what they do as part of their life and their interests. You know, it still will put us light years ahead in terms of our own spiritual development uh, than other people. Not that it's a competition, but to help us get what we want, we need to make sure that we're taking care of all the areas and aspects of our life. Not balance. I personally think balance is BS. That's my opinion. I think sometimes certain areas of our life need more emphasis than others. You know, when we're young and raising our family, that's a lot higher priority than when we're older and it's just us that we're taking care of, if that makes sense. Or when we're kids, right? We're not paying much attention to finances when we're children. At least I know I sure wasn't. I didn't think about finances until I uh, wanted to start thinking about going to college and things. All right. Any questions? If I can help you in any way, ask. Otherwise, I will be with you tomorrow. Have an awesome April Fool's Day. Just remember, it's April Fool's Day. Try not to play too many pranks on people. I'm not a prankster. I, sometimes it's fun, but I think I'm more funny than other people think I'm funny. So I've kind of given up on the pranks and the funniness thing. But I did pull some pranks on my kids in the day. All right. And my ex-husband for sure. Have an awesome day and I'll be with you tomorrow.